Hey there, everybody. Welcome yeah. to another uh, Contributor of the Month video. This one is for, we're celebrating the Contributor of the Month for November, even though the contributor that we have here today, uh, Mohamed Faisal, he did a lot of work at the end of October, just a little bit in uh, November. But um, even so, we're really happy to have uh, Faisal here with us. Faisal, thanks a million for joining me. Welcome. Uh, just for the people that maybe don't know you, could you tell us a little bit about uh, where you're from, a little bit about your background and stuff like that? Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Mohammed Faisal Hussein. I'm from Hyderabad, India. And the city is also known as uh, City of Pearls because the city has been uh, su uh, supplying the pearls uh, all over the world uh, for, from last four, 400 years. And also the city here is the second largest tech hub in the country. And all in all, I think the city is the best for the people who want to make career out of the tech. Incredible. So um, if for whatever reason, I know that you're a technology student now, but if that doesn't work out, you can always just go into the pearl industry. Have you ever thought of that? <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah, it's the speciality of this city. So I just want to say I like yeah. tech. Uh, I want to make a career in this technology. No, and especially after uh, looking at the incredible work that you did for Commissar there at the end of October, I don't think you will ever need to work in a different industry. You're already yeah. good enough with this one. Thank you. So Thank cool. You. So, uh, no, no worries. So I know that you're a student at the moment. Do what are you studying? Uh, I'm a student of computer science engineering. Uh, this is my final year. And uh, I I started my graduation in 2020. It was the mm -hmm. COVID era, and uh, we had uh, the first year in lockdown period. And especially, I joined the uh, course uh, which which has specialization of artificial intelligence and data science. So as you know, in the 2020, it was the booming uh, technology, artificial intelligence and data science. So I mm -hmm. wanted to. Like I had this interest in AI, so I joined this course. And uh, uh, to tell you about the, my first year and my freshman year, I uh, like I studied uh, basic technologies. Uh, I learned programming languages like Python, C, my first year. So, and in my second year, I think uh, uh, we had this many projects in our curriculum where we got to build some projects, real world, real world projects. There I started to learn about web development and uh, uh, I, I learned HTML, CSS and there was JavaScript, but uh, JavaScript was a new language to me. I don't know Python, so I thought uh, uh, with Python, we have Django, we can build websites through this. So mm -hmm. I took a shortcut and, and, and learned Django leaving JavaScript side. So I built a website called uh, uh, like online admission system. Uh, in the second year, also I think in my second semester of my second year, uh, I built a project uh, related to uh, machine learning, uh, like news fact checking system, where you mm -hmm. can ch uh, check if the news is act, uh, based on facts or fake. And uh, yeah, in my, in my third year, I I learned uh, full stack development. I learned Monstack. Uh, I learned about deep learning. I did some deep learning projects. And uh, in my at the end of third year, I did some in, few internships where I got exposure to real world projects, uh, industry experiences. Uh, yeah, this is my final year now. I will graduate in 2024. Incredible. And um, it, sound, it sounds like a really, really broad uh, curriculum and uh, degree in general. Do, is there anything that you kind of like see that you're going to want to further uh, once you're finished and you're wanting to go a little bit deeper in? Is it going to be more the the, the web development side or maybe the, the machine learning side? Yeah. Firstly, like I, when I joined this degree, I didn't know about any stuff about computer science and anything at all. I just uh, like uh, wanted to make a career in this technology field. 
So first I joined with this and thought like I will make a career in artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science thought. But uh, uh, during my uh, like uh, first year, second year, I got uh, exposure to this web field, software development. And uh, my interest developed here. I learned new technologies starting from HTML basics, CSS, then Django, JavaScript, then to some best technologies like Monstack. Mm -hmm. I learned very database, uh, new databases and cloud technologies like Docker. So uh, my interest grew in this software development field. So I mm -hmm. want to pursue uh, like I want to learn more about this field rather than artificial intelligence and data science. Like I want to pursue uh, my career in the software development field. Incredible. Um, anyone who I've ever spoken to who has gone through the the, the CS degree um, says that yeah, it's it's it doesn't really matter which country you're in. It's going to be very very challenging. It's very intense. There's a lot to learn, mm -hmm. and um, this is always something that I'd like to ask people, and um, especially um, computer science students. Um, have you found? some sort of like a productivity function that kind of helps you learn new things quickly? Like, is there anything in particular that you're learning now that maybe you're starting fresh? And, and, and yeah. how do you learn that? Yeah, firstly, uh, in my second year, I didn't know anything about web development. So first I had, there is something called HTML, CSS, you know, to learn to build websites, then, it's, then it is JavaScript. So I didn't know anything about it. Then I googled it. I did search on YouTube. So there are many videos like people, some great people have uploaded their uh, tutorials there. So I started learning HTML, CSS there. Then, uh, as I said, I learned Django in my second year uh, to uh, like, I, as I know, Python. So mm. then in my second year, at the end of my second year, uh, I participated in a hackathon. It was a national level hackathon uh, called uh, uh, code for good it was conducted mm -hmm. by jp morgan chase company there i got to meet uh, new people from all over the country uh, in my team we had around six to seven people uh, they were from different colleges across the across india there uh, as i know at that time i only knew django django python stack uh, to build websites but uh, uh, the teammates in the the teammates there, they had uh, this month stack. Uh, they know month stack, so majority yeah. of our team knew month stack. So we decided on building the project on month stack. So there, I learned that I did get I did not get much to contribute there. Uh, I, I I felt like I was left out because mm. I didn't know JavaScript back then. I didn't know month stack, React, anything at all. So, but it was a great experience. I got to meet new people. I, I like I got to meet uh, some great personalities from the company. Uh, the mentors were from the company official, like uh, the company employees. Um, I got to meet them. It was a 24 hour hackathon. Uh, as I said, I did not get to contribute much. So later, uh, what I did was I want to learn this, explore this mon stack as it was uh, booming. Uh, for software development field. Then uh, I got to know about Udemy. So I wanted to do course, a detailed course in this month stack. Then I picked a course in Udemy. There I, uh, the course I took was the complete boot stack, uh, sorry, complete boot camp, web mm -hmm. development boot camp by Dr. Angela Yu. There I got to learn everything from basics uh, like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GitHub, everything up to the mon stack related to an, uh, all the thing. Additionally, I got to learn about blockchain. She added uh, some extra classes related to blockchain. I got to, I got exposure to this technology as well. Then uh, I started building websites related to mon stack. My interest uh, grown little by little. Uh, then, yeah, I learned this course and working on projects, doing internships. Uh, I got practical experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think it's really important what course you choose 
YouTube is a great source, like uh, free to everyone. But uh, what I think is you don't get uh, a proper way, like how you can uh, understand from basics to industry level. So it is important what course you select, like a comprehensive course would be the best to anyone who starts first. Taking shortcuts will only make you uh, feel I should have learned more. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest people to take uh, to choose courses appropriately as they need. Yeah. Yeah. And like from what, from what I hear, um, yeah, you don't take just like a single uh, approach or just uh, use a single method to learn something new. I mean, there's no kind of like magic formulas to learn new things. So the, the your strategy of branching out and, and, and taking Udemy courses and going out and having real world experience through hackathons. Yeah. There, like for example, and um, that realization that you had of um, sure I can build any kind of website with uh, Django uh, and Python yeah. stack, but um, even though I can build uh, build any uh, um, website with it, it I, I I I can't uh, kind of those skills don't necessarily translate over to a Merge stack. And you, you only really realized that you wanted, and, and you saw the popularity when when other people were there around you. Just yeah. a, a quick question um, that I have. Uh, what's usually your um, ratio between Udemy courses started and Udemy courses finished? Because I, I've also used a lot of Udemy courses in the past, yeah. and sometimes it's hard to fully finish it. Uh, for this course, which I mentioned, I, I completed it the whole, it was 68 hours course. It took time. I uh, managed to take a few hours, one to two hours every day. And I finished it because I, as I felt, uh, I really needed it to work. Then uh, I also took a, another course uh, related to mobile development on Flutter, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I just started. I think it's. I only watched a few videos. It's not completed yet. Maybe 90% is left because I did not get much time to go to mobile development. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's based on your interest, like how focused you are, you want this, you want to learn this, then you will dedicate time. You will uh, will make time out of your schedule to learn exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. it's based on your needs, like how, interest how how much interest you show mm -hmm. and um do you do you think that um you need to put a lot of time uh, a lot of your own time to pick up these uh skills and to, to acquire this knowledge is, is this not something that um the the classes at university are providing in your opinion uh in my opinion we like we just see the basic stuff. We had this course uh, in our curriculum called full stack development. We had uh, their, uh, all the things related to month stack. But what I felt is it's all about theoretical knowledge. We don't get much practical experience there. So yeah. like when you learn theory and when, when you go out of, when you go in the real world projects, uh, you see it's ocean. You need, there are so many things you need to learn and you'll only get to know, get to remember them when you apply, when you practically do something, you'll get it. So I think uh, courses in the uh, like curriculum will help you get knowledge, what it is, but it's important that you apply them, get practical knowledge, doing exactly. projects, yeah. No, well said, and, that, and that's why um, like the, the world of open source is absolutely incredible for, for students and for people that are picking up new new abil um, yeah new abilities and skills uh, and just um on that point how did you get involved in open source initially? yeah so i knew there is open source community uh, but uh, what actually i was occupied with doing my own projects i did not much focus on this open source but uh, during Hacktoberfest, I did not I did not even know about Hacktoberfest that there is something called Hacktoberfest where people come from various uh, backgrounds and they contribute some open in open source projects. I got to know about this from my friends who were discussing on this. 
they were participating in this hacktober fest and uh, doing uh, contributing in some projects i got to know about this in the last uh, week of october then i, I felt like uh, it developed an interest in me that i should contribute maybe i will get to know how the projects uh, like how the industry standards look in the yellow projects uh, in the companies so i think i registered in the last week uh, then uh, what i did was i did not know much about open source how to contribute then i did google search then i went to youtube uh, there is a guy called piyush kar on youtube uh, he uploaded some very good videos on how to contribute to open source Mm, he explained how you can uh, know what projects you can uh, like contribute according to your skills then uh, what i did was i went to github there is a feature called uh, search where you can filter projects based on your skills uh, during hacktober fest so what i did was uh, i searched based on the label hacktober fest i mm-hmm. was seeing issues so there were many issues people co- like continuously upload their related to their projects uh, i was i searched and searched uh, there were many issues but uh, when i went to the projects not all like aligned with my skills which i wanted mm-hmm. to contribute in uh, mm-hmm. like my main interest in front end i want to contribute in some react uh, and the tailwind css especially tailwind css mm-hmm. uh, in projects so there was a project called uh, i think there is a uh, form bricks i they also had some hackathon during hacktober fest where they were mm-hmm. awarding some points to the people who contribute uh, but there were so many people who were uh, like as soon as they upload an issue people were at get getting this issue so i did not get uh, much to contribute there then i was searching and searching on github i saw your project there combiser uh, like uh, and uh, when i saw the issues they were aligned to my skills i i wanted to contribute uh, in uh, react i saw the project was based on uh, react and uh, tailwind css especially the front end so i saw the issues there uh, i thought like uh, maybe i can do this i can contribute here so yeah i got to know about your project like that then i started contributing it was the last week of october uh, october like the end of hacktober fest yeah yeah just the the tail end of it uh, it's such uh, a cool yeah. story because um, i think a lot of people especially a lot of people that have spoken to you in the past and um, had a kind of like a big block when they were thinking about one thing to uh, contribute to open source but not really knowing how and yeah. it's going to be really good to have your story at hand because you're someone that uh, is relatively new a, a newcomer to open source but um you through Hacktoberfest you wanted to put yourself uh, your skills to the test and and just um work on on some open issues that matched what you wanted to explore and it's incredible you you were able to for our project and um, deliver some incredible uh, value that um, not only were we happy that you um, added the your contributions but um yeah it, it was among the maintainers that we all agreed that you definitely deserved to be the contributor um, of the month for this month i just want to show people who maybe um are, are not aware i'm going to share uh this um, let's see if i can share this window that i have over here um yeah i think it's this one so yeah over here i i'll also add this uh down in the description below but here are the commits that uh faisal committed yeah. in at the end um so yeah you wanted to work um, on the front end and also um do some work with um, tailwind css and the commiser repository in the the front end 
um, a good few months ago, or it was in Angular, but we went through uh, a revamp, and we and now it's uh, it's in React. But um, I also just want to show what this actually looks like. So um, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, but over here in the resource dependency graph, you worked on some yeah. um, zooming. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah there was an issue. Uh, so when you zoom, there was an issue called when you hover there. Uh, the can you hover, please? Yeah. Uh, can you hover there? Hover okay. on the node. Hover, hover. Yeah, hover on on the link. On the link. Um, hover, hover on the link. Uh, yeah, okay. the you get some yeah, user and policy uses and policy. So uh, there is an issue when you zoom out while hovering there. The uh, yeah. It, yeah, users network. When you zoom out, it stays like the like that only. So it it won't uh, move. It won't uh, go away when you zoom out. So this mm -hmm. one, this one, this was a bug which I fixed. And also this zooming and zooming out, uh, zoom in and zoom out facility did not have this navigation barrier. Exactly. So which I added. Yeah, you can zoom in and zoom out. And also when you drag the nodes. Yeah, you can drag the nodes and also disable them. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cool. And also when you click the node, uh, when you click the node, you will get to know what, uh, like the details about the resources. Yeah, um, a, yeah. A, a, recent, a recent bug that was uh, introduced and that this was only very recently is that now this screen, uh, it blanks out yeah. while we're looking at the file out, but um, uh, we'll we be able to uh, to address that this yeah. uh, next release. When I work, it was do. not a bug, maybe. No, exactly. This is just uh, in the in the very in the previous release. But, um, okay, okay. But yeah, so yeah. You, so you, you didn't break anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's right. Yeah, and also I added the the main the best thing what I got to learn in the project was storybooks. I did not know anything about that. And mm. uh, like it helps you document UI components. Uh, it was really helpful. Uh, like when you document the component, it becomes very easy to re to use that component. Like otherwise, you have to go through the code there, understand how the component works, then you have to use it. But if you document this and you have this GUI, here you can understand how the code works, like how the UI component works. You can use it wherever you want. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. If you build the CSS component once, you don't have to build it again. You don't have to. You don't have to go to the code that check like how it works and all. It, it makes the life so easy. And also, yeah. what I learned was I did not know anything about TypeScript. Also, I only knew JavaScript. Then I got to learn how TypeScript works. It's the type version of typed version of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. It really helps. Uh, yeah, it really helps with the type safety. It just adding types along with the component. Uh, it helps with consistency and all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. did, did you find um, picking up TypeScript uh, a little bit more challenging than picking up uh, yeah, JavaScript initially? Uh, initially, I knew JavaScript, but uh, I did not know anything about TypeScript. But uh, when I went to your project, it was not that a big of a deal to understand. As I know, I, I know Java, I know Python, mm. you know C. So it was easy to relate, like how it works. Mm -hmm. Java doesn't have types. JavaScript doesn't have type safety. So when you add the type safety to Java, JavaScript, it becomes TypeScript. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very cool. So yeah, I'm just uh, really happy that um, someone like yourself just discovered the project through Hacktoberfest and you were able to, to, to ship this. Uh, as I said again, I'll add the, the links to everything that uh, Faisal added and contributed over that time. And um, so you can see what, uh, what, what work was done. Um, is there anything that you're working on now? What's, what's on your plate? Uh, and now I'm working to learn Next.js, that is also I got to learn about from your project. 
Next.js. So it is also a cool uh, library out there. Mm -hmm. I want, yeah, I'm spending some time on it. I, now I want to learn Next.js. Also, um, mobile development is left on mm -hmm. Udemy. I have to learn that as well. Yeah. Nice. And also, um, it's the end of the year, so I'm guessing um, it's exams period. Uh, yeah. You yeah, exam it's the mid, like uh, half, half of the year is completed. The first semester mm -hmm. of this year is completed. Uh, I have given my exams last week. It's done. This, these are all days now. So you have to study during Diwali? Uh, no, you are least then. The new semester will start after, uh, like, I think around 20 to 30 days, maybe. Uh, the but, semester but, is done. Yeah, but since you said that you had the exams uh, just uh, passed, and since Diwali just passed also, was it was it before uh, Diwali? Did, did, uh, were you able to, to enjoy no, the it was after Diwali. Uh, it was okay. after Diwali. I got so time. Yeah. To enjoy, nice. Um, so yeah. So just before we go, um, even though you're um, still just um, di dipping your toe into the world of uh, open source, even though yeah. very proficiently, if I say so myself. But for someone um, who might be starting out, and um, this, you're actually a great person to to speak to because many times when we ask people for advice, sometimes we we ask for advice. Um, to people who have gone through the stage that you're about to go through a long, long time ago. So sometimes they're a little bit disconnected, but you are a person that just very recently got involved, got started. So what tip would you give someone who would like to, 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 to be exactly like you, someone who starts and does uh, a good job with their first contributions? Yeah, I would suggest to people who are just starting to know about uh, open source, I think if you have some skills, if you develop some skills, you know, you have practical, uh, you have some uh, theoretical knowledge about it. And if you want practical experience, uh, open source is a great, uh, like great opportunity for you out there. Uh, it's not uh, that big of a deal to contribute to an open source. There are so many open source projects you can get on GitHub. You can search, uh, you can see if they align with your skills, you can start contributing. The only thing you have to know about is GitHub, Git commands, how can how you can raise uh, PRs, pull requests. And uh, what I would suggest is uh, on YouTube, you have so many people who help you if you get stuck. And also there is uh, open source community for every project. Uh, the, the help, uh, what helped me during this, uh, October first and contributing commissar project. I think it was the documentation. It was a very good comprehensive documentation. Uh, it helps you uh, like when you start the project, when you understand it, and when you want to contribute. So I suggest I, I would I would like to suggest people to start working on projects which have some good documentation because it's easy to set up the project and uh, start contributing. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, uh, understand you can search uh, issues related to your skills uh, like uh, you can uh, there are constantly people adding issues related to their projects on github uh, you can go you can search the issues you can see uh, the issue if you can solve it you can you can also talk to the people who uh, who raised that issue you can talk to them you can solve your doubts you can understand how to solve that before you go to the code and uh, you can start coding. Uh, if you're stuck anywhere, there is open source community like Discord. You have people have Discord communities. You can go talk to them if you're mm -hmm. stuck anywhere. Mm. And also, uh, it's I would say that there is no pressure on you that you have to do this in this time and deadline. Uh, so it's easy for you not to think about anything and you mm -hmm. can work. Uh, you can give your hundred percent. There is no pressure on you. Uh, you can work on the code. And also, uh, Chat GPT helped me a lot 
this time AI it assists you. I think uh, uh, if, even if there is anything new you can learn there is uh, you can google it you can go to YouTube uh, and as I said I learned something new called storybook and also I got exposure to TypeScript so yeah I think you have to just start applying your skills and you'll get there yeah great tips if if you are out there and you want to be like Faisal um, and just follow those tips of yeah finding projects that have issues with tasks that involve skills you want to improve make sure the documentation is good if you the contributor are going to spend time contributing to a project the project the least that they can do is to make it as easy as possible and the way to do that is through documentation so thanks a million for pointing that out um, there's a lot of upsides as you were mentioning you're not under pressure you're um, working on projects that you can choose so um and also another upside if you also want to be um, like Faisal and become a contributor of the month that also comes with a one-time uh, sponsorship through github so uh, which we're going to be um, very happy to to give you so if anyone else wants to be uh, sponsored and become a contributor of the month please check out the open issues join the discord server and join the open meetings that we have every week and on a monthly basis Faisal I just again wanted to um, tell you um, Congrats again for being the, the contributor of the month. Thanks a million for your, your contributions. Thank you. We hope to see you and always uh, welcome you in the community. Thank you. Cool. All the best. Have a good one.